Hey everyone, back to having some comic shop talk. Uh, some industry stuff to talk about. Um, sadly, nothing from the retailers conference because it kind of, I thought it was gonna be in Baltimore. They hadn't announced that it was gonna be in Dallas until very late and I didn't get to make it out and I haven't gotten back. Uh, I got a couple of friends that went. We're gonna, when we get have a chance to get together, they're gonna tell me everything that went on and what was, uh, Diamond talking about at their retailer conference with um, you know all the massive changes, image leaving, dark horse leaving. I don't have anything on that this week, but hopefully soon I'll have a lot of a lot on that. But uh, I mean, a lot of it's already out on the internet. Uh, one of the things I want to talk to you about today is uh, TCG Player, who I had touted. I had did an episode on how to put the comics online with them, how they had a scanner, how it worked great. And it was going well. I was building up, I had built up to about $100 a week at about 6,000 books on the kiosk that people could look up uh, here at the store. But then it was live on their website. And I was built up to about $100 a week in like dead stock, right? So stuff that I really didn't sell, didn't move in the store. Um, this was a much larger platform where people who were looking to fill runs and stuff like that were purchasing books, like $4 books. I don't do $4 books on eBay. To make, it, uh, for, to make it worth my while to do $4 books on eBay, I would have to sell probably 100 $4 books on eBay a week. A lot of work, I don't have the manpower for it, so I don't, but if you're a big shop, you have a big family that's working for you for free, or you have some other method of being able to do it, and you're able to put up a couple of thousand uh, books, because that's what you're gonna need to move about 400, you're gonna need way more than, than a couple of thousand to do four, 400 books a week in the $4 range. You can move expensive books on eBay pretty, pretty easily, especially if they hit the top 10. Um, you know, if you just watch the top 10 and then put those books on eBay, you should be, you know, you probably can run them through pretty quickly. What I tried to do was try to get rid of some books that weren't selling in the shop and move them online. And I was really loving it. And I was going to put, I had planned on putting my entire store on their system so then everybody, people that don't like to dig, and there are people out there that don't like to dig, they come in, my store is kind of a little bit real old school comic. If you like to dig, I'm the place to come because there's a lot of digging to be done. If you don't like to dig, I get a lot of frowns. They look at my wall, they look through, um, you know, I have a couple of specific boxes, they'll look through those, but they don't want to dig through the dollar bins and the 50 cent bins and stuff. So this way on the kiosk, everything would be on there. It would show the prices. Great solution. I was, I was over the moon. I touted it a lot. I talked about it a lot. Well, eBay bought TCG Player and they closed down the comics. So uh, we never got independence because we were supposed to get Image and Boom. We're supposed to be the next opened up. It was just Marvel and DC to begin with. When eBay first bought it, there supposedly weren't, weren't going to be any changes. Um, they were going to actually move into sports cards next, and I, was, I have a large amount of sports cards that I have no room to show. And you know what I always say? I say, if you can't see it, you can't sell it. So I have a lot of sports cards that nobody can really see or go through, because uh, even though I have a 3,000 square foot store, it is just filled to the brim. And I have a basement that is pretty much full also. So being able to move some stuff online where you can get some eyes on it um, was exciting to me and it was gonna you know, help the business. Uh, but sadly that is gone now. So I've been looking for another company to go with. Uh, I did Hip Comics and I did a show on the Hip Comics. They have a camera that you take the picture of your book and it, it automatically lists all your stuff. It never really took off for me in sales wise. I got very few sales from it. Um, their notification system wasn't great. I didn't really know when I got a sale. It didn't push notification to me any which way. Um, they didn't have a good phone app for it. So, you know, that's gone. I'm gonna start putting my stuff on Overstreet 
because they are talking about connecting buyers and sellers on there and they're looking to do it for free. I just don't know how many people are gonna be on there, but I think that's my next place to go. And um, I did a episode, actually I had a small interview. We, uh, we talked about the Overstreet and then I showed on the computer how to put your comics into it. I kind of left it alone because I already had the TCG player and with having the kiosk piece, to me that was the king. That, that kiosk piece, was really key to, to being the next level. You know, we already have it for Magic and Pokemon and all of our TCG cards, uh, the kiosk, which is great. So that we don't have people flipping through and touching our expensive cards all the time. People can just look up the card they're looking for. If we have it, we'll go pick it. And um, it's, it's not super quick, but it is easy. And it's very profitable because we're also selling online. So it's a great way to work it. Um, I'm gonna miss that kiosk piece with the comic books. Maybe if I can find somebody to build the kiosk piece, I can take a CSV from Overstreet after I put my collection in there and then dump it over to a kiosk piece. Something simple, it won't be pretty like uh, the TCG player kiosk, but uh, it, if it just brings up that we have the book in stock, that would be great. Finding where it is in the store might be a little different. But yeah, so there's a lot going on. Um, Whatnot's still out there. It beat my prediction, but um, I don't know if you've seen a lot of people talking about it recently. Um, if you really listen to their conversations, if they've had an auction that didn't go well, that somehow whatnot is making it up to them. Certain people, certain people on certain levels. Not everybody's getting that treatment. When you treat your sellers differently, it, be it becomes, I don't know, everybody knows how I feel about whatnot and that they don't treat every seller as, a, as a, a, just an entity. You do the best you can. Here's the platform, it's a great platform and you make your money. Um, and if you fail, you fail, that's business. This propping up people because they're touting your name on YouTube is, um, you know, it's not a free market, right? All these people are like, I'm making tons of money. This is, this is capitalism. This, it's not a free market, man. If, if you're getting, um, you know, what not exclusives and you're getting 80 or 50 of them, on a low print run um, and then other sellers aren't even getting offered them or and they're not getting the first opportunity at them it, it's just not a fair marketplace and that's why I don't go to it uh, I don't buy on it and there's a lot of buying opportunities because there's a lot of low-level sellers that are getting their their asses kicked to be honest with you uh, selling you know key books for a dollar or two because they have three people in their in a show. I say this all the time, if they were so great, eBay would have bought them, right? TCG Player is this little company um, selling magic and Pokemon online. They come up with a scan tool, which kind of elevates them a little bit. Then the ski kiosk tool, another elevation. They go out, they bought uh, Channel Fireball, you know, they made some acquisitions and, um, you know, then they started to grow. They put in the comics and they talked about doing sports cards. eBay says, hey, we, we like this. We like your format. We like your business model. We like everything there. Boom. Uh, we're going to buy it. Whatnot's been out there. And because they haven't gone public and stayed private, they're looking for the big sellout, right? And when I say private, they have sold some shares, they've done some funding, some rounds of funding, but it's still not on the stock market. So their thing is, is to, at some point, they wanna sell this whole company to somebody. Probably their, their idea was to sell it to eBay or Amazon. Amazon doesn't seem to have any um, interest in live auctioning. It's kind of something very difficult to control and Amazon really likes control. Um, but eBay built their own. 
and eBay has a much bigger group of people to send out notifications for when people go live. And you're gonna see some of the biggest dealers on whatnot. Once eBay launches, I know it's launched, but it's kind of beta. Not everybody's allowed on it yet. But once it opens up, these big dealers are gonna move over to eBay because they're gonna have 3,000 people in their room. Uh, vying to buy their items and the guys who were good at whatnot are going to be amazing at eBay they're going to crush it so you know good on them they made a good decision to move over uh, get on whatnot build a, an audience and also um, figure out how you do it like you there are a s small select few people that were able to go on there first time out and be able to run a really good show. Usually that's when you have a, enough people where you're, you're gonna get some sales, it makes you more comfortable, less nervous, more confident, and then of course the show gets better and better. Um, if you're on there and you're pulling teeth and you're losing money on every sale, it's hard as a human being to hide that and to stay on for your full hour and get your teeth kicked in. There's a lot of preparation, there's a lot of work involved. That's one of the, early on, that was one of the reasons I didn't go to Whatnot, because it's, it, it is a third job. I have two jobs already. That would be a third job. You gotta be a PT Barnum a little bit, a heavy duty salesman, car salesman a little bit. I was a car salesman a long time ago. I hated it. So, I wasn't about to go do it again. I want people to go out there and open up comic shops. I talk about it all the time. But there are so many different kinds of comic shops. I run an old school, what I grew up loving, comic shop. Digger bins, you can read books while in the shop. Nobody bothers you. There's other stuff, there's toys and video games and um, you know, I might have a low lawnmower out front if I need to make a little extra money. Who knows? Uh, if I get it cheap enough, it'll be out there. You can do all new comic books. If you figure out a way to get the traffic in to buy new comic books, fantastic because boy do we need to sell more new comic books we need to see sell more comic books to kids if you started a comic book shop that was just focused on kids and you were successful i'd be the first one to to pump you up for a for an eisner award we need readers if you want a long-term business not a flash in the pan because people will stop investing when stores stop buying if you go in with a, a book and the store says i, I don't want it it's a $300 book. I don't want it at any price because I'm afraid that the market's gonna crash and I just don't want it anymore. I already have four, five, six. And then people go, well, this really can't be worth $300 if nobody will even give me $10 for it. It can't be a $300 book. Um, that was the last crash in the 90s. Guys had cases of number ones that were like 30 and $40 a piece. Then they went to nothing. They went to like stores wouldn't even pay you a quarter a piece for them because they had a case of them. We have to be, as comic book owners, we have to be stewards of the business. It's not like every other retail, right? It is very different. That's one of the reasons I have so many SKUs. So when comics start to slide a little bit and it's just readership, I have video games and I have cat, die casts and I have toys and I have collectible pops and I have play space to play uh, magic and Pokemon. I have signings, I have art classes. I'm doing a lot of different stuff. It, it's to mitigate all that risk um, of purchasing and just trying to be in that, if I invest $3,000 or more on an exclusive copy, an exclusive book. I don't really have the reach on the internet um, to sell those books at that price mark, at that margin where they're making that crazy profit margin. So if they're buying the books at let's say $3 a piece, it's a $9,000 investment. But if they're selling them at $20 a piece, you know, $19.99, it is a huge return. Now there's shipping and there's all other kinds of stuff. There's cost, there's overhead. I get it. There's the artist they had to pay for. You know, it might cost them 12 grand. Um, but to return 60, you know, if you're making 40 in that 
and you can swing it and sell it in a short period of time, um, you know, that's a huge profit margin. But is that a long-term thing? If not, they've made their money, they can move on, they can sell something different, they don't, they can sell, they can sell widgets, who knows? You know, uh, but to sell comics, you really have to make readers. You have to get kids involved from five, six, seven. Um, you have to get them to fall in love with something, uh, really to fall in with love with the art form. And then those kids will be buying comics into their 50s. And you can pass the store on to your family, you could sell the store to somebody else. Good luck selling a store when the market crashes. You know, you might be able to dump your items off at maybe 8% of value um, when you liquidate, but you're not going to be able to sell your business. Um, especially in a business that's so specific as like an exclusive business. If you're running a store that's doing exclusives on a monthly basis, you try to sell that to somebody else, that is a, like, that is a skill that one of the reasons I'm not in it is because it, it, it there is a particular skill to it. You know, you have to pick the right book, you have to pick the right artist, you have to pick the right composition. I mean, I'm not down, downgrading what those guys are doing at all. I, it impresses me. I don't think it's good for the hobby, but it is a skill. And not everybody can do it. That's why you've seen some stores go under trying it. It will put you out of business quickly if you're not good at it, um, or if you stick to it too long. So the guys who know when to pivot and they, they know how to do it, good on them, but it's very difficult. If you're thinking about opening a, a store, if you're gonna start out as an online guy and you try it out online, and then you don't have the overhead in the store and stuff like that, and it works out and you can build an audience and build uh, interest and then moved into a brick and mortar, I think that's what Comics Elite did. Great, great, but we need more comic shops. We need them in every town. And so get out there and open a comic shop. You know, you make 30, 40 grand a year, you know, income. And you could probably even do it while working your regular job. You open up at four o'clock to eight o'clock, you work four hours a day. You know, how bad is that? And you get to buy comics and read comics and have a lot of fun. Till next time, keep reading comics. Open a comic shop.